So we have this basic interaction where when we tap a button, the correct answer is shown and the correct width is shown. But it's not that great of an experience. We can improve this by adding a little bit of an animation. So instead of everything just showing up, basically we'll animate the bar from zero up to whatever its final width is going to be. And to do this, from React Native, we're going to import the animated library. And then on our actual component, we're going to set up a new variable. We're going to call this underscore animated width. And that's going to be a new animated dot value. And we'll default that to zero. Now what we'll do, rather than using the row width we define up here, for the actual width, we can just go ahead and say the width is this dot underscore animated width. Well, how do we actually define the animated width? Well, we're going to set up a new function. And I'm going to call this animate answer value. And inside of this function, we're going to say animated.timing, which is a function that the animated library provides us. And we're going to say as a first argument, this dot underscore animated width. And then as a second argument, we can go ahead and pass our configuration. And the only one we're going to be using is two value. And our two value is going to be our final width. So the way we can actually decide this is by taking what we had down here, our percentage and our row width, and just bring that up into this function. And we can say our two value is going to be what our previous row width is. If you want to know how we set this up, check out the previous video. There's a link down below on how we used handle layout to decide exactly how wide this row should be. Now, before we can actually get this to work, we need to make sure we call dot start on this animated dot timing. If you're using animated dot spring or animated dot timing, we need to actually tell our animations to start and when we want that to happen. So we're just about done. Next thing we need to actually do is decide when should animate answer value happen. And that should happen when the answer has been answered or the question has been answered. And that's all happening in the parent component. But we're passing that answered property down. If we look at our default props, you can see we've got answered is by default false. When a user taps an answer, that's going to be changed to true. And knowing that, we know we can use a component lifecycle hook called component did update. And basically at this point, we know if this.props.answered is equal to true, then, and if we look down here, we can see if this.props.answered is when we were setting the final width anyways. So if this.props.answered is equal to true, then we can go ahead and call our this.animateAnswerValue function to actually animate that value in. So I'll save this. And when we tap one of these rows, we get a big issue or a big error. So let's walk through the process of uh, actually what's happened here. So our component did update. That all looks fine. The stop props dot answered is available there. Animate answer value. This is being defined correctly. That we used previously, that was copy and paste. So we know that's fine. Our two value looks okay. We're targeting that. That's all good. Let's go down to where we're using it. And that's where our actual issue is. So here we're using a view, but by default, you can't use animated values in a view, a text, you know, a normal component. So what we actually need to do is say animated dot view here, just so that we're using the animated version of this, which can actually understand animated values. So let's go ahead and try this again. If I tap the row, you can see that it does animate into place. And that's how we can basically use animated.timing, animated.spring. There's also animated.parallel, animated.sequence. There's all these different ways to use animations and how we can actually start using them in our application. And, you know, for these subtle interactions, it adds a fair amount. If you've got any questions about what was covered in this lesson, be sure to either watch the previous videos or to check out the code. All the links for those are going to be down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.